Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Chris Collins, the creative archetype based in Lynchburg, Virginia. And this is my new art vlog, Get Struck Tuesdays. What's up guys? Let's cut the shit and get on with the first episode. We got this fresh pen and ink and there's a lot going on in this piece. Uh, you got the butcher knife, of course. And I think a lot of people see the words severed. So yeah, uh, these are things that you're seeing. You got, you know, certain elements like the candle that's burning. And if you look close enough, you see some letters in the flame. Um, I really, you know, try to pay close attention to detail. And it's funny because my girl, I showed her this and she was like, oh like you know of course she thinks it's like about us or whatever it's like when i come up with concepts and themes and stuff like that a lot of times it just comes out of nowhere all right and it does not always relate to my life now can i relate to this piece yeah sure i still reach uh deep down and pull out from my experiences and yes from my past too and sometimes from my present Great to be back at it, drawing pen and ink pieces again. I've said it before, but this is my base. This is where all of my art begins. How about I call this one, no f**ks at all. <laughs> yeah, no f**ks, you know, like you give no f**ks. The symbolism will always be present in my work. Symbols like these are used whenever I feel the need, such as here with fire and air. I've been told that my style is kind of like clip art. I'm a big fan of 70s and 80s clip art though, and I typically use references. A lot of times, clip art references whenever I draw something because I don't remember exactly what everything looks like or how it needs to be drawn. So yeah, pen and ink. Uh, if you guys follow me in the 100 episodes of Guts and Glory, my previous art vlog, you see that you know I put in quite a bit of work uh, with the pen and ink game. So uh, nothing's changed. I'm gonna keep on bringing it to them and bring it to you guys. So yeah, get struck. While I was away planning my return to vlogging, I decided to post new episodes once a month. Of course, that could change, but I'm focusing on quality. I'm a busy man when I want to be, and it's important to put my family first while achieving whatever goals I have left. I decided to continue vlogging because I have a lot of shit to say, and I need to leave all of this behind for my children when it's time for them to carry on my legacy. While on hiatus, I didn't create much art. I was working on a little bit of art for our new streetwear line, but I wasn't painting or drawing much at all. I miss painting watercolor florals, and I hope you miss them too. Yeah, so one of the things I started painting recently was this pretty flower. And I painted it for my girlfriend for Christmas. <laughs> she liked it a lot. I think she loved it. Um, yeah, she's pretty cool. She's pretty f cool. Um, so yeah, um, I painted this one with love. And, I mean, I even put a nice little message on the back of it for her. And she liked that too. In fact, I think she loved it. So, yeah, man, I'm back doing this, uh, these watercolors and just enjoying it, you know, losing myself in the painting process. Uh, just trying to paint beautiful things, guys. That's all it is. Just trying to paint beautiful things. This is my therapy. 
and has been missed and honestly needed. Art and fatherhood are two out of three things I take the most pride in. But right up there with those two important things is the fact I take pride in being a generous lover. I haven't always been the best lover, but over the years, it's become very important to me. I show my love in different ways, through touch and attention, by the words I use when I'm being nice, and yes, even by giving away my art. The art could outlast the relationship, or in some instances, I'm sure it's died along with it. Thankfully, I never gave away a lot of art, so my current lover is building up quite the collection. You guys probably know I love painting watercolor florals, and it's become one of my signatures since I started painting again in 2017. Being away from painting for the past several months made me realize that I cannot live without it, and I'm a better man when I'm doing it. Sometimes I wonder how much I mean to people and what they think or how they feel when they look at my art. I hope it reminds them of me and all the good times we had together. But I know that some of my art might remind certain people of painful situations. And that's okay too, because there's always intent behind my actions. One of the art stores I frequent in my city is Hobby Lobby. It's not my favorite, but you cannot refute the fact that they have a good selection of supplies. I had a gift card, so I figured I'd get what I could. I've been wanting to experiment with sponges, specifically with background textures, and just adding playful strokes without brushes. I also found this watercolor paper with a bent corner. It was discounted which is always nice. It's funny, but I've never purchased square paper, so I decided to. It was crazy how long these lines were. I mean, I know this was after Christmas, and apparently there was a lot of Christmas decorations on sale, but I swear they gave out a church discount or something. Why do I say that? Well, Hobby Lobby is buddy-buddy with Chick-fil-A and Mardell Christian bookstores. Yeah, they're affiliates. So yeah, that's why I said that. Anyway, I'm definitely not going to get political. I don't have a side to die with. I don't even buy into politics. I just think it's fake and another way to give us the illusion that we actually have a choice. I know there's people who don't support Chick-fil-A or Hobby Lobby because of politics but I shop where I want and I eat what I like. So here I am painting on my square watercolor paper. It's got a great feel to it and I really love how the paints look on it. I'll probably grab some other sizes because of the overall quality. This painting is a gift for a special person who's always been very kind and supportive. I wanted to try something different but something the same when it comes to my watercolor paintings. So yeah, I came up with this and I did this piece for a friend who is in the hospital. And I just wanna say big shout out to Laura. Everybody loves you. I love you, so you know. Um, this is for you, I hope you, I hope you appreciate it and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that it, when you look at it, it gives you like a good feeling. It makes you feel like, you know, not only feel like, but know that you're loved. I kind of screwed up capturing some of my time-lapse footage, but you guys still get it. I decided to use the white gel pens, AKA jelly roll pens. I figured I'd use these to add some simple white highlights to my watercolor paintings. For the other white areas, I applied a fluid mask. I pretty much use that stuff on every piece now. Saves you a lot of trouble. I just control what I can when it comes to watercolor. And I love how it looks when you let the paint dry and add subtle pen strokes to accentuate details. 
This piece turned out beautiful. It's very subtle on purpose. It relies more on its simplicity and its beauty seems effortless. The background was created using one of those sponges I purchased. Honestly, sometimes I impress myself. I mean, seriously, how can something so beautiful come from me? I think the same thing about my children. How can two people so beautiful come from me? Good friends at Sundog Art Studios threw their regular party for First Fridays, and I was and always will be honored to have my art on display there. It's great to share the walls with some other dope local artists and friends. Just want to say big shout to Jennifer Gilly, Ken, and everyone else affiliated with Sundog. Make sure if you're in downtown Lynchburg, you drop by and show some love. I've been seriously needing a good pencil sharpener for a long time. And this one just stood out. And no, not because it looks the way it does. <laughs> but anyway, a good pencil sharpener is a must. And I'm glad I have one that does a good job keeping my drawing pencils sharp without wasting any lead. I'll keep you guys updated on how long this thing lasts. As you can see, it does a good job. I do need to figure out how to empty the pencil shavings. I don't use a lot of drawing pencils, mainly because the sketching aspect of my art is just letting me know where things need to go. And that's honestly about it. And I'm not saying it's not important, but it's probably gonna get erased. Yeah, man, uh, this one in particular is a little bit more loose and, you know, not as like uh, clean, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, kind of junky and just like, I'm not really taking myself too seriously with this one. But yeah, I uh, hope you liked the video. Uh, I am back, so this is episode one. And like I said, I'll be dropping a new video once a month. Okay, gang, just want to say thank you for joining me for episode one of Get Struck Tuesdays. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Likes and positive comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching. Peace. Three, two, one, I win.